How's it guys and girls? Thank you for joining me. We are back with the fourth game for our sneaky green skins. And we've already seen a lot of holes in this list. Um, and to be honest, I'm struggling to, to find ways to plug it up, right? So a good way to do that is by cutting this. <laughs> Uh, but this is the point of the list, so we're gonna just try and keep at it and see what we can do. So this is game four. Um, we've managed to at least win two games out of the first three, which is which is good. Um, we still with our four orc boy begins. Our five squads of black orcs, our normal or keyboard boss, and then off to the side over here in our vanguard deployment, we still have our three squads of night goblin archers, our goblin charmon, and one squad of night goblins. Okay, so that was our list for this army. We ended up pulling a vampire counts opponent, and you can see here we are in a little bit of trouble. So they've got the corpse card with the unholy lodestone, which is pretty much the regeneration one. They've got a mortis engine, which is the regeneration one. They've got a necromancer for regeneration, and they've of course, they ended up with Vlad von Karstein, which is a really cool model. They have one Vargulf, and then two squads of regular Graveguard, and one squad of Graveguard with great weapons. All of this will do very well against us. Then over here, in the woods, we have two squads of the Blood Knight. Now, I don't have any large things, but at the end of the day, they are uh, cavalry. They've got one, two three four five things that only my beacons can hit and i only have four beacons this game and then off to the side they have that um the veteran squad for the wolves and this is the dire pack and they are gross as hell all right so that is the armies for this game it seems to me that we're just not going to draw any opponents that's that's vulnerable to our army composition and with vulnerable i mean where we you know we start the game and we think ha huh, okay well this is a composition that's gonna it's not gonna give us any issues because this is a tough composition for us to go up against over here we can see we are marching forth with said goblins and then of course we have no idea that these guys are there and we have we have seen these guys on the mini map though so we know that they are there these guys we don't know about yet over here you can see we are actually going to try and reduce the size of our line by manually assigning targets for all of our guys and they're going to try and basically just fall into there into a new formation and then these guys over here they're actually supposed to go in there for into a flanking position but lo and behold we're actually going to spot the blood knights and the blood knights are going to spot us so yeah you know kind of like okay both of our secrets are out now what do we do now the blood knights have an ability which makes them um, even less less worried about um, you know ranged attacks and they are armored so these guys aren't gonna touch them uh, the grave god is armored the grave god of great weapons is armored everybody here is armored except for the Vargulf. so that's gonna be their only real potential target and over here we are assigning um, our orc biggins to try and deal with the blood knights at this point in time so you can see they are moving in they're going to do a massive charge into the orc biggins but we've got our war boss we've got everybody basically just pulling in and at this point i was hoping i could surround them fast enough before these guys get all up in our face and then our squads are a little bit trailing behind over there we've got the vargulf he's charging into the orc war boss you can see there they managed to pull these guys out even though we managed to get a few charges off on them and then over here we have got fear 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 on everybody and then comes the curse of the bad moon yes the curse of the bad moon all right so the goblins are here and we've got our archers set up on on this side here they're gonna try and go into the back not because we're trying to stop guys from um from running away just so we can get rid rear shots and then our night goblins are also setting up that way and these uh, black orcs are trying to push in from behind and these black orcs are trying to push in from behind so at this point in time what we're trying to accomplish is to just basically surround them okay but we do have itchy nuisance going off uh, on everybody at this point in time so we have a slight bit of an advantage initially the blood knights are coming around these uh, dire pack they're also coming around I'm even shooting magic missiles in here and the magic missiles honestly guys they don't don't really do much from the goblin i think you need to hit somebody on a steed that's flying and then you'll do a lot of damage so 
first thing that happens, we finally activate Stand Your Ground and the War now that everybody is in combat and everybody can uh, benefit from it. And then over here you can see the Dire Pack is moving around. Now I spotted that the Dire Pack was moving around and I tried to cut them off with the Goblin Shaman. I'd much rather have him run into them than them running into there. But unfortunately I was a little bit late here. They do change their targets and the Goblins are starting to run. So they're basically trying to just reposition um to get a better angle and to try and stay away from the die pack over there over here you can see the blood knights are pulling out again these blood knights are pulling out again we've got some beacons running after them and then over here our orc Vorbos is still fighting fairly well our little knight goblin shaman unfortunately he did no damage and then except for the fact that he did no damage he's breaking so that's not going to help us a lot. These guys got pulled out by both squads of Blood Knights. They end up routing. I've got a, another squad of Orc Biggins routing. These goblins, they do need to start firing at something. And then here you can see the Dire Pack is going to start moving around. And he is going to start getting into our uh, Night Goblin Archers. So yeah, we are still trying to, to beat these guys up. But you can see with all the regeneration effects that they have, it is a very tough army to break this invocation of the heck going off with the added area of effect so that makes it even harder to to deal with it and the orcs at this point in time we honestly just don't have any weapons that can deal with it and then we've got a dire pack charging into the goblins over here we will spot them soon enough our orc war boss started running before i could click on the potion and um as i was trying to click on the potion the orc war boss ran and that's it so he pretty much just got run down uh, our goblin archers, they are just breaking, they're being run down, these biggins are being run down, those biggins are just routing all over the place. The little shaman, he is trying to make his way up there, he did cast itchy nuisance there, but it was far too late, and then he just gets a massive charge from the blood knights, he gets killed, and that's about it. So, everybody ended up dying. Um, this thing says close defeat, I don't think it was. Um, it was it was a massacre, to be perfectly honest. I don't think we had the weapons to deal with this situation. Um, just doing physical damage against an army that's got two regeneration effects stacked up and they have the invocation of the heck that can go off. Uh, uh, it's, it's just not enough damage that we can do. So, yes. Okay, so we're back at two wins and two losses like we usually go in these series. Um, on the one side, yeah, I suppose it's a good thing, it keeps it interesting, but on the other side, come on, okay, we, we, just, we, just, we just want something to work for a change. But let's look at the uh, tail of the tape at the end of this match, and what we will see here when this happens someday, eventually, there we go, alright. So what we can see here is that uh, we actually had a ton of stuff left, we had a ton of stuff left. But everything routed after the war boss died, and that was pretty much our mistake as well. We we ended up letting the war boss die, and it cost us the entire game. So the war boss got 14 kills. Nobody stands up. Black orcs with 42, 43. But if you think about it, we only killed 193 guys, so it shouldn't be too high. However, uh, Vlad only got two. The necromancer got 10. Uh, that's 35, 35, not bad. We shut him down very hard, so he didn't do too much in 108 and 77. So, um, yes, I think we didn't have the best composition to, to deal with what they were bringing. Uh, but at the same time, at the same time, um, if we look at the amount of orcs, green skins that were left after this fight, we seriously could have done a whole lot more if the orc war boss didn't end up dying. Um, so that was a big mistake from my side and that's something I'll have to start looking at. I'm fairly reckless with my HQ choices if I know they're the combat class, not the caster class. Um, and that might be something I need to start working on at some point in time. Guys, that's it for this game. Thank you very much for joining me. Remember to just hit the subscribe button and leave a comment, like the video. That would be fantastic. And then I'll see you guys for the next recording. Until then, bye-bye.